Hi, this is Paul Slack. It's Good News Broadcast speaking to Dr. Thomas Crook. Hi, doctor. How are you? Good, Paul. How are you? Okay, good. It's amazing, I could say, how are you? And I can remember maybe this much that you did say uh, good. Uh, how, how can I do that? Why do I do that? And uh, how does that happen? Well, you know, it happens because we, we take new information, like what, what you just said or what I say to you, and we associate it with old information already in our brain, so we remember it. And we remember it if we're healthy because it's adaptive. It helps us at some time in, uh, in life. And, and, you know, a good memory is not just a memory where we remember everything that, that happens. We remember what's adaptive uh, for us. And we forget what's not adaptive, what's irrelevant, or, or the, in the worst case, what's, uh, what's damaging or painful to us. So you've got a healthy memory, Paul. You're doing, you're doing great, and uh, it's good to talk to you this morning. <laughs> Dr. Crook actually is a uh, world expert uh, in cognitive and diagnostic cognitive uh, instrumentation. Here, no, let's see here. Uh, uh, with 200 credited scientific papers, nine books, 300 invited lectures, uh, 30 years experience, and uh, uh, what brought you to this field? You know, I, I don't know. Like so many people, uh, I, I, I sort of uh, fell into it. I got out of uh, uh, a graduate program and, uh, and was very, very lucky to go to the National Institutes of Health. And uh, I was the junior guy in the psychopharmacology research branch, and so we had the Nobel Prize winners in, you know, anxiety, uh, sleep, uh, all kinds of other things, depression. But nobody at that time was thinking about cognition. We nobody thought about Alzheimer's disease, and so the junior guy, the young guy, got to got to go there. And and I, you know, I've been doing that uh, for whatever it is now, 38 years since. So. Uh, it's been a it's been interesting. I've gotten to uh, learn a lot, and here I'm here today because I'm working with uh, nature made, and uh, particularly with their product, studying their product, uh, Great Mind, and um, you know it's a, it's an interesting business. Uh, that is, can we can we preserve and can we better learning and memory and. Uh, you know, Nature Made has made a, uh, a real effort here to develop a product, and more than develop a product, to really uh, teach Americans how to maintain a good uh, brain through uh, a change of lifestyle. And that's what uh, you know I'd like to talk about. It's like, what can we do in our lifestyle to improve uh, learning and memory, improve our brain health, really? You know, I, I'll just uh, mention one uh, one thing about myself. I uh -huh. spent uh, two years uh, uh, doing the series of The Brain oh, yeah. on, on public television. Oh, gosh, Earth. sure. Sure, I uh, know it very well. Right, and we spent a lot of time down in the National Institute of Mental Health. Uh -huh. And so I, uh, we, when we tried to figure out, so we're making a TV show, and it's a co-production with France and uh, Canada and yeah. uh, Japan and Australia. Um we tried to figure out how do you start a show like this, okay? All right. And what we uh, uh, came up with uh, was that we got Greg Luganis, the, the diver, sure. uh, uh, walking up the the ladder yeah. um, in San Luis Obispo. Right. Um, and we, all we did was put the camera on his feet. Yeah. You know, how, do, how does Greg Luganis walk up the uh, the ladder? Right. And, uh and on a series called The Brain. So right, right. The Brain is the star of the show. You realized uh, that uh, oh, I, what we needed to yeah, do. So, yeah, yeah. so let's talk about The Brain, the actual brain use. Well, it, well, what, well let, let's talk about uh, Greg Luganis, you know. Well, you, if that's what you're doing, you're focusing on his feet going up the ladder, that is a kind of memory that is uh, called, uh, we refer to it as procedural memory. It's like remembering how you ride a bike and so on. And that is a, a type of memory that's very, very well preserved throughout life, even, even in the presence of uh, uh, severe brain trauma and even in the presence of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but there are many other types of memory that are not. So okay. your ability to walk into a room, uh, meet a, a series of people, and remembering their names, that's fragile. Uh, the, the climbing up the ladder and then diving is not, is not fragile. It's, it's likely to hold on. And one of the challenges there is to help people uh, learn how to deal with uh, diminutions of one sort or another in that, those fragile memories. And, uh, and the way you do that is in, in, through uh, lifestyle changes, really, and, and there are several. Uh, and uh, if I could just give you three yeah, points. Yeah, sure. No, I'm very, I'm very bad with names. Okay, okay. 
Well, well, you, you see, you know, you see, Paul, you say that, but most people say that, and, and they can't all be right. You know, if you ask people, like, are you good or bad at remembering names, you know, 85% of people say I'm bad. Uh, and, uh, in fact, in a recent poll, <clears throat> 70% of people said they're very concerned about their memory and they think their memory is diminished. And, you know, the reality is they're probably right. They're not worse than other people their age, uh, but... They probably are right. You know, 35-year-old people perform significantly lower than 25-year-old people, and 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 45 compared to 35-year-olds. So it continues through the lifespan. So it's a matter of age, but it doesn't start. You know, it's not like you wake up on your 50th birthday and you have a problem you didn't have the night before. It's a it's a issue of um, through the lifespan this linear kind of decrease that uh, that occurs with age. So. What can you do about it? That's that's what we're yeah, interested I'd, I'd in like now. Yeah, I'd like to know, but I wasn't so good forever. I've never been so good. Yeah, at but names. most most people say that though. They say, "Well, gee, I've never been good with names. You know, I'm really good at something else. You know, I'm good at re recognizing people. When I meet somebody, I know, yeah, I've seen them before, and yeah, but I'm not good in remembering what their name is. But uh, that that's that's the way it is. You know, we all think that we're worse than we really are compared to other people our age. Okay. Uh, but so number one is nutrition, and and nutrition is, is is a simple matter, and that is just remember that what's good for your heart is good for your brain, okay. and uh, but there's another part to it as well, and there are dietary supplements that are targeted at your brain, and, and they have very little or no effect on, on your heart. And one of them is uh, Nature Made Great Mind, which is a, a product that can be. Uh, can be very helpful. I, I've worked with it, I'm working with it right now, uh, studying it in the clinic, and it's, a, um, it's an interesting product that I think people will, uh, uh, will, will benefit from. Uh, second thing is exercise. And Can yeah, I stop you just one yeah, second? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, what, absolutely. so, what's, uh, uh, so what's in that? Uh, well, well, you know. Does, well, does, it, does it say on the, on the bottle? Yeah, it, it does, but there, there are a number of compounds. This was an attempt to formulate from a number of things that are out there that have been used and very widely used in Europe right now to improve learning and memory, to, to combine a variety of products. One, the one I'm most interested in uh, personally is uh, acetyl L-carnitine, which has been used for uh, quite a long time and shown effective in uh, literally hundreds of studies, but really has, you know, barely made it to the American uh, market. And uh, uh, you, you have good evidence out there in academic publications that uh, this nature-made product, uh, Great Mind, um, is clinically effective. So, so good. what's good for your, you know, what's on your plate, what's good for your heart is good for your brain. But in addition to that, there are these specifically targeted dietary supplements of which I think nature-made Great Mind is, uh, is, is the best. Um, se second, exercise. And, uh, well, you know, again, it's good for your heart, good for your, for your brain. And in addition to the, um, the, the physical exercise, aerobic exercise, it's matter, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just get your heart going, keep, keep it going for 20 or 30 minutes or more, and that's going to be good for you. And in addition to that, there are games, exercises. You, you know, all this is Sudoku and all the, these kinds of things that are out there, and they're, they're all fine if you're interested in it. Part of the problem is that a lot of people out there are really not. If you are, great. If you lo love Sudoku, then do Sudoku. It's, it's, it's a great mental exercise. Um, but I've worked with uh, Nature Made in doing a, a series of brain games. In fact, they're launching this brain games uh, challenge. And, um, you know, if you go to uh, naturemade.com, uh, you'll see a series of uh, games that I helped develop that I think are interesting to people because they're and, and they're targeted specific uh, brain functions and because they're interesting people are going to go there uh, over and over and and third is sleep and I, I can't overstate the importance of sleep for a good uh, memory and mental clarity and so on and and part of the reason is what happens to us during the day we we kind of keep in a as kind of a, a short term uh, uh, box in our brains, and then at night we sort it out, and we we uh, go through uh, what relates to things that are already in our brain, and we incorporate what happened during the day with what's happened in our life prior to that. And you know, I, I understand. I mean, many people are going to say, "Well, gee, I've got two small kids, and uh, 
you know, I, I, I can't get eight hours of sleep, I can't get six hours of sleep. Um, <clears throat> and if that's, that's the case, okay. But, uh, but still, you've got to remember that there are millions of people watching David Letterman and Jay Leno. And uh, uh, my point is, you know, if you can get a good night's sleep, uh, then, then do it. Put a higher value on sleep than being, uh, you know, amused or entertained. And they're very clever guys, I'm not diminishing them at all, uh, at, at night. So those are, the, those are three of, of uh, what could be 12 or 15 or 20 lifestyle tips for improving brain function. Okay, so let's let's talk about the uh, the supplement. I'm a, I'm a believer in supplements. Okay. Um, uh, so you, you take it uh, once a day. Take it right. once a day. Okay. And is there a certain uh, uh, potency in it of the amount of this? Uh, what was it called again? No, it's I mean, called, I've heard of ginkgo. Yeah. But about no, ginkgo, no, ginkgo. Ginkgo. I've heard of that one, and people yeah. say that improves your brain. Yeah, you what, know. What's the thought there? Well, I, you know, I'm a skeptic. Uh, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, uh, news uh, networks in which yeah. they come to me because they think they're going to get a skeptical view, which they do. And I've always said, I've said for 20 years, like, there's no evidence that ginkgo biloba works. Does it have some effect on the blood? Uh, yeah, it does, you know. But does it, is there any evidence that it has a, a positive effect on learning memory? No, there, there's not. And that's been confirmed by an NIH study just, just lately uh, showing that, no, there's no evidence that that compound has anything to do with learning memory. Oh, is it sold for that? Sure. Do, uh, it, you know, are claims made that it improves? Yeah. And, and gosh, I don't know what the market is for that. At one time it was, uh, you know, five or six hundred million dollars, but there's no evidence. Uh, here the issue is, you know, can we... Uh, not just make claims, but show clinically, and 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 we can with this nature made uh, uh, great mind. Okay, and the games uh, I have heard, and because there's so much video gaming out there overall oh, yeah. in general, that uh, and you know parents are always saying, do, you know, do I allow or do yeah. I not allow? Yeah. But there has been a lot of I have read, you know, in Science Times and uh, studies where they are saying they feel that it definitely definitely improves a, a young person's mind. Oh, uh, well, I think it can, absolutely. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, Paul, uh, ten years ago, uh, we, we believe, we believe what we learned in school, and what I learned in school was that, you know, if a, if a brain cell dies, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's dead. And now we know that that's not true, that, you know, you can grow new brain cells. You can grow uh, dendritic, we refer to it as dendritic arborization, connections among brain cells. And, uh, and how do you do that? Well, you do it with these lifestyle tips and you do it with mental exercise. And so I have, uh, you know, no doubt that, that, that you can improve your memory through these brain games, the Nature Made Brain Games, or if you like them, others. Sure. I'm going to try. And, Dr. Cook, let me let you go. Thank you so much. I look forward to speaking with you again. Let's Thank, do some more Thanks together. a lot, Paul. I look forward Thank to you. it. Thank you. Bye-bye.